What is the best type of founder? And what type of founder are you? Here at The Scalable Company, after years of working with thousands of founders and CEOs, many of whom have gone on to run $100 million companies, we've come to the understanding that there are really four main types of founders. Today, let's figure out which type describes you best and which is actually the most effective. Introducing the Founder Type Matrix. The Founder Type Matrix lays out the four different types of entrepreneurs that are needed to scale virtually any type of business. They are the inventor, the driver, the builder, and the guide. Now, the Y-axis of the Founder Type Matrix acknowledges that some founders default to the vision strategy side of the business, while others default to the operational tactical side. So take a moment to consider, where do you tend to gravitate? Are you more of a strategic visionary or more of a tactical operator? The x-axis of this matrix acknowledges that founder types change as companies scale and mature. Put simply, the needs of an early stage company vary drastically from the needs of a late stage company. And it's common, even necessary, for founders to change as the needs of his or her company changes. So where's your business today? Are you more early stage? more late stage or somewhere in the middle. Now, let's look at each founder type so you can decide which one sounds most like you. Founder type number one, the inventor. The inventor is an idea machine capable of conceiving new products, projects, and initiatives seemingly out of thin air. Inventors are driven by trends and instincts, and they create value by researching and prototyping visionary breakthrough ideas. Inventors are critical in the early stages of a company's founding, but an invention without execution is merely an idea, and that's where the next founder type comes in. Founder type number two, the driver. The driver is the primary source of acceleration and momentum in any company. Drivers are critical in the early days because drivers are both willing and able to roll up their sleeves and get the work done. But drivers have a hard time stepping aside to let other people do the work. Their mantra of, if it's going to be done right, it needs to be done by me, is really helpful when a company is scratching and clawing for initial traction. But that same mentality can also hold a company back as it scales. And that's why great founders also need to become great builders. Founder type number three, the builder. The builder is a leader of leaders who adds value by architecting the company's operating system and standards, and then holding their teams accountable to maintaining those standards. Of all the founder types, the builder is probably the least common, but it's also the most critical if your goal is to create a scalable company. Now, fortunately, this founder type is also the most teachable if the founder is willing to learn and adapt. But builder type founders, whether natural builders or learned builders, can run the risk of becoming a micromanager if they're not careful. And that's why the fourth founder type exists. Founder type number four, the guide. The guide is the keeper and sustainer of the company's vision and culture. Unlike the inventor who adds value by answering questions that haven't even been asked yet, the guide adds value by knowing just the right question to ask at just the right moment. And then they trust their own team to actually execute on the appropriate action. But guides are not passive observers. An experienced guide will know when to step back in and when to fully engage without shifting too much into inventor mode. So which of these founder types is the most effective? A, the inventor, B, the driver, C, the builder, or D, the guide? Well, the correct answer is actually E, all of the above. Sure, many successful founders have a default founder type, and nearly all of us will find at least one of these founder types that we relate to more than another. But the fact is, the most successful founders understand that each role is essential at different times in a company's life cycle. So let's use the entrepreneurial life cycle that we talked about in a previous video to visualize this all businesses progress through four distinctive and predictable phases. The key here is that entrepreneurs must adapt if they want to advance from one phase to the next one successfully. So let's look at each phase and talk about which founder type is best. Now, during the launch phase, when a company is still trying to find product market fit, the inventor type is obviously going to be essential. I mean, think about it. Products need to be invented. Offers need to be invented. Launch and marketing strategies need to be invented. This stage is all about creating something from nothing, and that's exactly what the visionary inventor 
loves to do. But during the growth phase, it's time for the inventor to step aside and let the driver take over. Constant invention is a distraction, and invention without execution is a recipe for frustration and failure. In the constraint phase, the if it has to be done, it must be done by me attitude becomes a hindrance to scale and causes most companies to enter the dreaded flatline. If you wanna push through the flatline phase, you need to become the type of builder who not only hires for your weaknesses, but also hires for your strengths. This is the key distinction between companies that scale and companies that flounder. However, lingering in the builder type for too long can do more harm than good. Builders at their worst become micromanaging bureaucrats who stifle creativity and culture. They stifle innovation and they can induce a death spiral. That's why it's essential that you shift into the guide role just as soon as your company is through the flat line and back on an upward trajectory. Moving from the builder type to the guide type at this point is the final step to ensuring that your company makes it into the scalable zone. Said another way, inventors create and build, drivers launch and grow, builders create scalability, and guides nurture and scale. And successful founders learn to do all of the above. If you want to know how successful founders actually make their company scalable, be sure to check out our video on the lessons I learned from almost bankrupting my very first company.